hi kelvin here by the end of this video you should be able to calculate the vertical height of points in a construction site using height of collimation method and rise and fall method for height of collimation method before you head to the site you should have a tabulated paper that will enable you to take the readings on site and for the rise and fall method we are going to take off this height of collimation column and replace it with two columns rise and fall the instrument that we are going to use here is an automatic level simply called auto level the old design of the auto level is known as dumpy level to carry out the field task we're going to need an auto level a tripod stand and a leveling staff the auto level is mounted on a tripod stand and we are possibly going to need a plumb bulb which will help us to identify the point of reference on site the plumb bulb comes together with the new case box in case if you buy a new one now that we know the equipment we need for this field work next we're going to identify the benchmark on that site a benchmark is a known vertical height this height is usually marked out on stones and permanent structures around a construction site at times you can see them on the building of old churches and structures the civil engineering surveyor should be able to identify this point on site to be able to carry out his work efficiently in modern surveying the benchmark of various points on the earth's surface is now computerized that means with a gps receiver you can identify the benchmark of a construction site the old markings is now becoming obsolete many gps equipment used for site engineering will actually help you with this task next now that you have identified the benchmark on site on the recording paper we are going to write that the ordinary benchmark is 86.452 so three decimal places next we are going to take our first reading by reading through the lens of the auto level to identify a mark on the leveling staff the staff will be on the benchmark while the surveyor will go a bit distance away from the benchmark the first reading from the surveyor on the leveling staff is known as backside this first reading we are going to record it under the backside which is 1.034 to three decimal places next the staff will move away from the benchmark to another point however the surveyor did not move because the surveyor did not move but the staff moved any reading we are going to take is called the intersite it is 1.961 next 
the surveyor has not moved. But this has moved and will move again. We are going to record it under intersight again. This time around, we are going to record 0.672. Next, this surveyor wants to take the last reading on this position. This will move the third time. Now, because the surveyor will be taking the last reading on this position, because after this last reading, he wants to move the equipment to another position or to another point. That last reading will be called a foresight. And the foresight reading, we are going to record it here as not point four eight eight. I want you to observe the standard way of tabulating this reading. Next, the surveyor is moving to a new point, still on the same construction site. Next, the staff will not move, but the surveyor has moved. The surveyor will now look through the lens and get a new reading on the leveling staff. That new reading will be a backside because this is a new position. Remember that whenever we take the first reading from a new position, it's called a backside. And when we take the last reading on a position, it is called the foresight. In between the backsight and the foresight, any reading is called an intersight. This new reading will be on the backsight. However, it's going to be on the same line with the foresight of the last position where he left off from. The new backsight is 2.74. One. Next, the surveyor will not move, but the staff will move. That becomes an intersight. And the value for this new intersight will be 2.571. Next, the staff will move again, but the surveyor has not moved. And this new point is 1.991. Next, the surveyor want to take the last reading. Because that will be the last reading before he move, I'm going to record it under foresight. That is, he want to take the last reading on this station at this point. And that last reading is 1.632 and on the new position he's going to look through to the road or leveling staff because he moved i'm going to record this on the back side which is 0 0.512 next the surveyor will not move but the staff will move. And the reading will be under intersight, which is 1.773. Now the surveyor wants to take the last reading on that site for this particular task. And that last reading will be called a foresight. So we're going to record it under foresight. And the value is 2.167. As the surveyor was looking through the instrument, the lens, he's going to see this on the staff. What the surveyor is reading is the middle crosshair, 
not the top hair and not the bottom hair, but the middle cross hair. The value we are recording on the table is for the middle cross hair. That is the value we have actually used here. You're going to see the top hair, the bottom hair, and the middle cross hair. The reading should be on the middle cross hair. When we want to transfer points on site from a known point to an unknown point. The next thing we should ask is, what are all these points on site? Where is the staff moving to? The staff is actually moving to various points. They can be a manhole, they can be a marked point on the site, they can be curbs and gutters, which are usually seen by the sides of the road, very close to the construction site. It can be marked old bridges or structures. It can even be from old gates. It can be point from old trees or permanent structures around the site that will not be easily be removed. It is the responsibility of the surveyor to identify these points on a site and represent them in a comprehensive drawing. This can also be carried out on a new land before any construction will begin. And for the setting out of the foundation, a theodolite or a total station will be required. A total station is a theodolite that has EDM and microprocessor in it. The calculation we are going to carry out here now using height of collimation method and later using rise and fall method will enable the engineers to know the levels on this site. It also helps for cut and fill of earthwork on a construction site. Now that we are done with the field work, we are going to head back to the office to complete the calculations for this very work. Next, let's learn how to calculate different heights for the staff level using height of collimation method. Step number one, we're going to transfer the benchmark to our reduced level, which is 86.452. Another thing to mention here is each, the first point is the benchmark reading. The next point could be a manhole. Let's call it manhole one. The, this next point probably could be a curb. Let's call it curb one. Now this third will, could be another point. Let's call it point one. And here probably there is another manhole. And probably there is another manhole. And probably there is another point. And probably this is another point. And this is probably another curb. I'm just using this to tell you that each of these points is a position on the construction site. You should be able to give those positions names or point depending on what you're looking for. Next, to start the calculation, we're going to say 
reduce level plus our backside. This plus this will give us 87.486. The answer will go under height of collimation. Column. This is step number one. Step number two. This new height of collimation, which is a new level, will minus this. The answer will go to this point. This minus this will give you 85.5. Five. This new value is the height of this manhole. Next, this height of collimation will minus this, and the new answer will go here, which is 86.814. Next, this height of collimation we subtract this foresight and the answer will go here. This minus this will give you 86.998. Next, we are now having a new backside with a new reduced level. Next, because of we have a backside here, we are going to add this to the new backside. If this adds to this, we're going to have a new height of collimation. The answer will come back on the same line. Remember, when this added to this, the answer came back on the same line. So if this adds to this, we're going to have a new value here which is 89.739 next now we have a new height of collimation now let me say here that the height of this curve is 86.814 and the height for point one is 86.998 that means this point is on a higher level than this point. Next, this new height of collimation will subtract this intersite. And the answer will go here. This will subtract this. And the answer will go here. This will subtract this. And the answer will we come in here. Next, now we have encountered a new height of collimation along the line of a new backside. Hence, this plus this, we are going to have 88.619. Next, this new height of collimation will subtract this and the answer will come in here it will subtract this and the answer will come in here with this calculation we have been able to identify various heights for each of these points on the site if we want to actually do a cut and fill task using this we are going to identify a reference point and know which area to cut and which area to fill next how are we going to know if our calculation is correct the formula is we're going to sum the backside likewise we are going to sum the foresight. Here, let us sum the backside. 
we are going to have 4.287. Next, let us sum the foresight. And we are going to have 4.287. Next, we are going to identify the last reduced level. Our last reduced level is 86.452. Here, we are going to have that the last reduced level is 86.452. We are going to identify the first reduced level. The first reduced level is 86.452. And we are going to write 86.452. Now, this is the formula you are going to use to check for the table. Sum of the back side is this, minus sum of the four side. This minus this, we are going to get zero. This minus this will equally give us zero. Because this answer and this answer are the same. Hence, our calculation is okay. In many tabulations, the sum of the back side and the sum of the fore side would not be the same. In such tabulation, the last reduced level and the first reduced level will not also be the same. However, the difference in this and the difference in this must be very close, if not exactly the same. And the difference should not be more than plus or minus 0 0.05. Now that you have known how we tabulated our data, how we actually reduced the level to identify various points, the elevation of various points on this site using height of collimation method. And you can also use this formula to check if this and this are the same. Next. Using the same table for the height of collimation, we are going to remove this height of collimation and we are going to split this column into two. This side will become the rise and this side will become the fall. Any difference in our subtraction using the rise and fall method if we get a positive plus, it's going to fall under this column. If our calculator gives us negative, it's going to fall under this column. Now, using this data, let us learn how to calculate elevation of points on a construction site using rise and fall method. Some engineers are comfortable with height of collimation method while some other engineers are comfortable with rise and fall method. For rise and fall method, step number one, we're going to transfer the benchmark to the reduced level, which is 86.452. Next, step number two, we're going to subtract this from the back side. That is, this minus this. This minus this. It will give you minus 0 0.927. You can observe that I did not put a minus here because it's already a 4. Next, this will minus this. This minus this will give you a positive and the answer will move in here under rise which is 
1.289. Remember, when this minus this, the answer went in this row. And when this minus this, the answer went in this row. Hence, this minus this, you are going to get a positive. Hence, our answer will go under the rise. And your answer will move in here on the same row. Next, we have a new backside. We are going to start all over again from this backside by saying this minus this. This minus this will be positive. Our answer will go in this row, which is 0 0.170. Next, this will now subtract this. This minus this will be positive. Our answer will go under rise on this row is 0 0.580. Next, this will now subtract this. This minus this will be positive, which is 0.3. Five nine. Next, here we have a new backside. We're going to start all over again. This minus this. This minus this will be negative. Hence, we are going to come here on this row under four, which is minus one point two six. One, but I did not put a minus because it's already under four. Next, this will minus this. This minus this will be a negative, and we're going to have minus not point three nine four. I didn't put a minus because it's already under four. Next, let's calculate our reduced level. Next, to calculate our reduced level, to know the height for various points here. This is a point somewhere on site, another point somewhere on that site, and this is another point somewhere on that site. This is another point somewhere on that site. These are various points we have chosen on that side to actually identify the height, the vertical height. I'm going to start with this, which is our ordinary benchmark. This will minus this. Why minus? Because it's under 4. This minus this, the answer will go here, which is 85.5. 525. Next, this we now add to this. And the answer will come in here. Why adding? Because this is rise. So we're going to have this minus this to get this. This new reduced level we add to this and we're going to get this. And we're going to get 86.814. Next, this new reduced level we add to this, and our answer will come in here, which is 86.998. Next, this we add to this, and our answer will come in here. This we add to this, and our answer will come in here. And this new one we add to this, our answer will come in here. Next, at this point, this will now minus this, and our answer will come in here. Why minus? Because it is under 4. Next, this will subtract this, and our answer will come in here, which is 
0.452. These values are the vertical elevation point of this point on that construction site on a two-dimensional drawing. You're going to see this drawn in this order. However, these points are not usually in a horizontal order. These are different points on that site. Next, to check if this is accurate, we're going to repeat the same addition of the back side and addition of the fore side. If you add all the back sides, you are going to get 4.287. If you add all the four sides, you are going to get 4.287. For the rise and fall method, we are going to use this formula to check. We are going to sum the back side. And we are going to sum the fore side. The sum of the back side is this. And the sum of the fore side is this. 4.287. Here I will write 4.287. This is also 4.287. Next, you subtract this. And your answer is not point not not not. Next, we are going to sum all the rise. We are going to sum all the fall. You are going to add all this under the rise. And you are going to get 2.5. You are going to sum this as well. You add. Next, for the fall, you are going to add this plus this plus this. And you are going to get 2.582. Remember, we added this, we added this, we added this, and we also added this. Even though it is fall, you are still going to add them. The sum of the rise is 2.582, and this is also 2.582. Next, rise minus fall, and your answer is 0. Point not, not, not. Next, the last reduced level is 86. 0.452 and here we are going to have 86.452 minus the first reduced level the first reduced level is 86.452 hence here is 86.452 minus this will give you not point not 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 for this calculation we got this however in some tabulations this and this might not be the same and this and this might not be the same likewise this and this might not be the same However, using this formula, any answer you get here will be the same as this and will be the same as this. The difference between them must not be greater than 0 0.05 plus or minus. I have shown you how to calculate vertical heights using height of collimation. We actually collected data from the field. We used height of collimation method for this table to identify various heights. And we use this formula to check 
if our calculations were correct. Likewise, we repeated the same calculation using rise and fall method. And we use this formula to check if our calculations were correct. If this video was helpful, feel free to click the like button. Also, subscribe for more videos like this. I will see you in the next video lesson.